Hi everyone. Um, I hope that you can hear me. I hope that you can see me. Um, do let me know if you can't. So my name's Nicole. Um, I'm the Market and Communications Associate and host for the Ada's List conference today. Perfect. Everyone can hear and see me. Amazing. Um, so we're here in the marketing and product track right now. So welcome everybody. Um, I'm aware that we're already quite a few minutes into this half an hour slot. So I'm just going to start um, straight away. So I would like to introduce Hua Su, and she is going to be talking to us today about poetry as a companion in product development. So if you just want to switch your camera on just now, Hua Su, and you should be able to join the call. We'll just wait here for a minute. There we are. And so I'll just let you take it from here. Um, say something. Can we hear you? Can you hear me? Perfect. We can hear you well. I'm going to turn off my camera and my mic and it's up to you. So enjoy and chat to you soon. All right. Thank you, Nicole. I'm so excited to be here with you all, Ada's List community. And thank you to Nicole and everyone for doing spectacular organization, which you can see we're kicking off right now. And I'm talking today about poetry and how I use it in product development and how that can also extrapolate to other creative interests you have. So first, let me start with an imagery for you. His knees were high, elbows bent at 90 degrees as his arms pumped close to his sides, back straight and head up as each foot landed in front of the other. Too much majesty in his last strides. That is part of a poem by Camila Aisha Moon called Perfect Form. And as you can imagine, she is talking about an athlete running down a track. And it's beautiful because she's describing different parts of the human body in such detail, you feel that you're there, that you're part of it, or that you might even be this person that she is talking about. And that is the sort of transparency that I love to see when I work in product development teams. We often focus a lot on the finish, on you know that photo, perfect, someone is breaking through the tape, you know, crossing the finish line. And as product teams, we celebrate that a lot, which we should, right? We have product launch events where we have these big point in time events where we invite customers and say like, this is our year celebration, or this is why we also have huge conferences like WWDC and these annual events that have so much suspense building up to them. We should absolutely have these great times that people can look forward to to celebrate. But at the same time, I love thinking about how we do what we do, not only what it is that we do. I love thinking about the elbows pumping, the knees bending all the way down that stretch. And how that shows up in a product development team, for example, is as many of you might be familiar, let's say you work on a sprint cycle and you have a goal, you have a two week sprint, these tasks will get checked off by then. But how is it that you are living your life during those weeks before the sprint ends? How often do the designers and engineers speak with each other? How often is product bringing in new insights from the business, from sales, from marketing, and making sure that engineers know why they're doing what they are doing? And these are the aspects that keep us going day to day, because as we've come to learn in recent years from research is that the sense of fulfillment gets very hard to upkeep when we only have these stones of, I will only be happy when this product launches in December. So between now and December, what are we doing with our teams? Are we celebrating that we're improving our form? 
Are we challenging each other on how we work day to day? And so in addition to poetry teaching me through imagery and through embodying exactly what I just talked about, you know, po a poem lays it all out there. You want to get the sense of perspiration, inspiration from a poem. You cannot just read a title and get that feeling. You have to be there with the poem throughout. You have to understand the twists and turns, and then you get that sense. So it very much exemplifies what it is like to use a process, to use a way of being as a way to create a certain feeling. And that's the type of feeling that you might want to cultivate in a product team. Other than that, another way that poetry has played into product development for me is that a poem helps me to understand how to invite people into discussion. So in that poem that I just shared at the beginning, you could argue, maybe there are runners in this chat here, maybe that form that's being described is actually incorrect, not up to date with the latest research, right? But because a poem is being so vulnerable and is showing you all of the inner workings that go to create that feeling, it reveals the inside and gives you an opportunity to say, I disagree with the way that this is being done, or I have a different take. And that's key to collaboration and a team. In fact, we also have poems where after you read them, you feel like you're in a conversation with a writer, that you are in a conversation with the other people who might be reading this poem. I'll share an example that's from another language in Chinese. And I'll explain after what it's saying. But let's start with just two simple lines from this poem. So it's a it's two simple lines, and I'll I'll explain afterwards. No worries. It says, Li Xin Pei Jiu, Hong Li Xiao Huo Lu, Wan Lai Tian Yi Xie, Neng Yin. It ends with a question, so obviously it's inviting the reader. But it's not just that there's a question mark. It's that it creates this very feeling of it's talking about warm wine, a hot furnace. It's talking about inviting that person in for a cup. Similar to perhaps those of us in the Northern Hemisphere uh, who are experiencing the autumn chill coming on. You want someone to invite you in for a cup of hot chocolate, perhaps. Those of you in the Southern Hemisphere, different feeling right now, can give you a different poem for that. But that is the same type of feeling that I seek to create with the people I collaborate with where they feel that they are part of the conversation. It could be on a video setting like this, but even the way that we write emails and we do documentation is ending with that feeling that we're always improving and that you're always welcome to put in your piece, put in what you, you have in your mind. And so, one way that helps poets to be able to do this is word choice, creating emphasis in different parts of a poem, is reflecting on techniques that maybe hark back to what other poets have done. And then you feel like the writer is in a conversation with those past poets and you get drawn in. You wanna be sitting at that table, drinking that cup of tea with them. And one 
learning that I have had through reading poems that range in eliciting feelings of joy to sadness to anger and so much more is that I want to feel as a human, I want to feel alive. I want to feel this range of emotions. And similarly, so do the people that we work with. We want to feel the happiness of a customer who uses our product and actually it changes their life, makes their day better, saves them time, helps them to do their day-to-day -day work or navigate their life better. And that feeling would not be possible without the contrast to the anxiety that leads up to releasing a new product feature, the feeling when we launch an experiment and the results are very different from our hypothesis, where that might feel temporarily like a failure and then the second time you adjust and go around to it, you realize you've learned and how much you've grown. And that feeling of progress is a very different feeling. And so whether it's creating product copy in the product where we're talking to customers, or it's the way I respond when someone says in a stand-up call, this didn't get done yesterday because of X. I'm very mindful of how I'm holding the feelings and the experience that we're all having together. We're having an experience of what it's like to build together, of what it's like to sell to a customer together. And I cherish that very much. It's what motivates me day in and day out to do what I do. And next, besides what we've spoken about in terms of poetry, reminding us that it's important how we do what we do, not only what we do, and also teaching us how to experience and appreciate emotions. The third part I wanted to talk about is that there are very technical aspects of poetry that we can continue to learn from. And just because it's a creative art form does not mean that there cannot be technical learnings from it, which is why if any of you here have interests, you know, ranging from making art, dancing, all of these actually have very interesting techniques to them where we should honor them and we should not disregard them as sources of learning for building technology. So one example I'll touch on in poetry, there are many different types of techniques and I am always a learner, is around rhythm. So most of you may already know there's you know, a very standard, a basic one is iambic pentameter used by someone like Shakespeare. And we can take, say, he has sonnet 104, and a line that says, to me, fair friend, you never can be old. Very basic one. And as you read this, I tend to like to read, when I'm reading, I'm actually reading out loud to myself in my head which is perhaps slowing me down. It's part of the way my mind works. And what I've noticed from doing this is that it creates focus, right? It creates this driving narrative where we can feel the dialogue between characters. We can imagine what it's like to have those characters physically be in a space with each other, where when you're talking with someone, as it gets heated, maybe you walk closer to each other, you walk further apart. 
the physicality of what's going on shines through. And while we may not all be in a physical presence with each other at this moment, it reminds me of a very pointed technique that we can alter. So we can choose to use different numbers of syllables to have different places of emphasis. And this is the way that we might work in a product team where recently I've been reorganizing at work two of our product teams and how they work. And for one of them, I decided to start lightly. So we have a first sprint planning meeting this Thursday. It's going to be a bi-weekly meeting. We are not having daily stand-ups, not yet. I'm experimenting with, we're doing a short written stand-up every other day and then we'll figure it out from there. So these are choices that I made. How often do I want these interactions? They take. And I am mindful of what effects these choices have. So if I create a meeting at this time, it's taking away time from this person's calendar to do this. It's creating a time when all the different members of the team can gather for a very specific reason. It's creating that emphasis for them that this is important what we're talking about in this meeting. And the length of the meeting that conveys some implications about how important this is rel relative to everything else. And it's not static. As we do retros and go on, I might notice there's not that great engagement in this sort of meeting. People are not getting that feeling that I was trying to create with the poetry of my product development framework. And so I, I can choose a different rhythm. And it's really empowering to me to realize that just as a writer has so much agency over the words they use, the imagery they choose to portray, over their length, their style, their aesthetics. I have the same agency as a product leader. I have that same capacity if I put my mind to it and my heart into it to inspire my teammates and to help us enjoy ourselves as we spend time together in our experience of delivering to customers. So I'll read to you a little bit of a poem from another writer. This one is in Spanish and I'll let you enjoy it. She says, Cada letra de tu agarrar es vos subiendo su escala en predilecta. Cada cicatriz de ti and mi orificio auditivo as una flor de suspenso. What she's talking about is a yearning for human connection. It's a poem about, say, imagine someone is thinking about someone. And she creates this imagery as if, if someone were talking to you and you can really hear that resonate in your ear. You can imagine their voice even when you're away from them. And it creates this feeling like a flower of suspense is the term that she uses. This is Laura Solorzano. And I would love to know what you all do to create those flowers of suspense in your life. It could be through all different manners of creative expression. It could be Woodworking could be an athletic activity you do. Could be you make a podcast on the side. We all have these creative hobbies. We're all seeking connection 
And creating technology really is about creating connection between customers, between partners. And so I would love to hear from you all. You are all welcome to contact me personally after this, right in the chat of what are those sources of inspiration that you would like to draw from and bring into your work? I would love to work through that and be inspired by you. So for me, as I mentioned, I read poetry. I write a little bit of my of that on my own. And what I get from it is number one, I understand how I can appreciate how I do what I do, how our team does what we do, not only the end. I, under, I understand the importance of creating an emotional connection, leading with empathy and cultivating what are the feelings that we want to get that will that ultimately drive people to make buying decisions and to be customers, to renew. And third, it helps me to appreciate that there are techniques that we can draw and learn from, from a wide variety of fields and bring into what we do. All the speakers during the Ada's List Conf have a wide range of skills, hobbies, interests. I'm so excited for you to continue to learn from everyone. I will pass it back to Nicole. Hi, Hwaso, that was amazing. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so I think now we are trying to keep on time. I know that the other rooms have started to move around as well. So what I'm going to do is finish this presentation here. We're all going to go back into the networking rooms. If you would like to stay in this room for the next half an hour, you can do. Um, let me just remind everybody what the talk in here is. So if you stay in the marketing and product track, um, next up is Amy Williams, Advertising's Positive Revolution. You can move into the tech room where that's Augustina Ajay and she's talking about information of technology and digital health in developing nations. So that's in the tech track. And you can go back to the restructure track, which is Patricia Gestoso. How much money did the lockdown cost professional women? That's in the restructure and sustainability track. So just another massive thank you to you, Sal Hazu, and enjoy the rest of the conference, everybody. Thanks again. Bye.